Humans are natural innovators. We're always finding ways to make things easier and better. Today, we're diving into the next big wave of innovation, the digital revolution, and why Bitcoin could be the S&P 500 for this era. From farming to factories to the internet, we've been automating the world for centuries. Now it's money's turn. Let's go back at farming, right? We invented tools like plows and irrigation systems to help us grow more food with less effort. It was like giving our muscles a mechanical boost of automation. Then the industrial revolution began around the 1700s to 1800s, and we built machines that can do the work of many people. Next came factories, 1800s to 1900s, where we created factories with assembly lines where each person had a specific task to build products faster and cheaper. Then around the mid 1900s came computers and computers were able to do complex calculations and store that information. Then late 1900s came software and we created software to make computers even more powerful and versatile. It was like giving those computers a set of instructions to do all sorts of amazing things from writing documents to playing games. And so software birthed the automation age, right? The late 1900s, 1990s to be exact, where we began connecting computers together, creating a global network of information and communication like a big giant world brain. Now we enter the 2000s, the new century, where everything's becoming automated. Reed Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn and part of the PayPal mafia, said, said a while ago, software is going to eat everything. So software started with computers that help us do complex calculations faster and more accurately than any human. Then software began to eat up retail, right? We all know about Amazon and that began the automation process where we can do online shopping, automated warehouses, which is changing the way we buy and sell things. Then automation went after media. We get our new music, entertainment, news, online, personalized to our taste. Transportation, self-driving cars and trucks are starting to take over the road. Office work, right? COVID woke us up to, hey, like we can actually do work anywhere and do a lot of good work anywhere and everywhere. And it helps us schedule meetings, manage emails, and even write documents. Money, right? Software inside of money where we can bank, invest, and pay for things with just a few taps of our phone. And, and I'm not, I haven't even gotten into the role of crypto and money, which we'll get into in a second. So let's get into the S&P 500 of the past. For decades, the S&P 500 was the gold standard for investors. It represented the best of American innovation and growth. For the past 50 to 80 years, the S&P 500 was like owning a piece of the most technologically advanced country in the world, the USA. The U.S. had the right mix of freedom and rules, which made it a great place for businesses to grow and innovate. That was why it was hard to beat the S&P 500, because if you were a rich global investor, because that's where a lot of money comes into new places, the U.S. was a new place early on, and all the wealth was outside of the U.S., and so you got to put yourself in the mind of a rich global investor. So if you were a rich global investor, you could simply just invest in the U.S. stock market, and watch your money roughly double every seven years. Even as the country matured over the last 50 to 80 years, those were the returns. Early on, they were higher, right? But you didn't really have an S&P 500 index you could have invested into. It was a safe and reliable way to grow your wealth. Plus, the number of shares available were shrinking through buybacks, making those shares even more valuable. As I mentioned, big investors are the ones who really move markets. They're putting hundreds of millions and even billions of dollars to work in the market. Put myself as an example. If I had $100 million and I knew I could turn it into $1.7 billion over 30 years, which is a 10% a year return, that would be a no-brainer investment because I'm already rich. I don't need to take any crazy risk. And that's the mindset of what a big investor is looking at when they're looking at places to park capital. So what's the next S&P 500 for the internet age where software eats the world? I believe it's Bitcoin. When gold was delinked from the currency around the 70s, that's when S&P 500 became the gold standard of the industrial age. 
Similarly, Bitcoin is becoming the gold standard for the internet age. Imagine it like this. The internet is the new land of opportunity and Bitcoin is like the scarce shares of the S&P 500 in this new world. Uh, it's very scarce. There's a limited amount, only going to be 21 million and no one can create anymore. Plus it's been growing like crazy over 50% over the last decade. As a money manager, my job is to think about what kind of returns I can expect from different asset classes, including Bitcoin. I need to know how much risk I'm taking and what kind of reward I can expect. This is what led to a lot of smart investors in the 1900s putting their money in the S&P 500, as I mentioned before. And this is why I'm betting on Bitcoin now. I won't bore you with my complex math, but I've done some very complex math, looked at other very smart people who are way smarter than me's math, redone my math, looked at other math, crunched the numbers, and I'm on the conservative side. But I think Bitcoin could grow to about 25% each year for the next 20 years. There's a lot of uncertainty in the world right now with governments printing money and new technology changing everything, but it also means there's a lot of opportunities for growth and innovation and Bitcoin's at the center of that. This is why I'm so picky about the other investments when I talk about on the channel, my 100X rule, right? Looking at investments that can potentially grow 100X. I'm not really concerned about if I own them 100X. I'm, it makes me, it forces me to think about can this, does the investment have enough upside for it to be interesting to me? Because if not 25% a year, from Bitcoin, which is my expectation, sounds really good, right? I do know there's lots of other good investments out there, which is why I, I'm always looking for opportunities. Software is going to eat everything, and so I live in studying software that is changing every aspect of society and it's just beginning, right? So th for me, those are where the returns are that could potentially do better than, than Bitcoin, but it's no pressure, right? Because if I only bet on what I like know, like when I know it, I'll make the bet. If I don't, I'll park it in Bitcoin. But I don't like guessing games, even though like investing is about guessing. But the, the thing that people maybe forget about investing is there's no such thing as a quote unquote safe asset because cash in a world where the money is being increased at 7% a year is losing purchasing power and value. So it's not as safe as people think it is. You got to do, you got to risk adjust your returns and then make the best bet to send your money into the future, managing all the risks. So even if I don't find other winners, I'm not worried. Bitcoin is like investing in America back when it was just starting to become a superpower. It's got a huge potential for growth and wealth creation, the way I look at it. So Bitcoin is a new frontier investment, but it also has the potential to be the next S&P 500, the way I look at it. So if you believe in the future of the internet economy, Bitcoin is worth studying a lot. Want to learn more about investing? Join my Inner Circle newsletter. It's packed with my step-by-step -step thought process on investing. Plus, you pay what you want. No tricks, just valuable info to help you feel confident about your money. The link's in the description, but you can also just type in wealthbuildingmadesimple.us. Be fruitful and go multiply your money. Philip Washington Jr. is a registered investment advisor. Information presented is for educational purposes only and does not intend to make an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any specific securities, investments, or investment strategies. Investments involve risk and, unless otherwise stated, are not guaranteed. Be sure to first consult with a qualified financial advisor and or tax professional before implementing any strategy discussed herein. Past performance is not indicative of future performance.